This world is very cruel, but I continue to have hope. Good things can happen if you only believe in your friends. <laughs> the Wall, Raid on Stohis District, Part 3. What role are these guys going to play, I wonder? Why do I feel like they're going to have more power than they have now at some point? This whole sect has been hinted at, repeatedly. And they seem to be their own thing, like they're sideless. Like they were arguing with the uh, the inner ring people at the trial. And we're getting increasingly more focused on them. They could be a potential enemy. Protect this! <laughs> oh my god, that's what, that's what he knocked Annie through? The wall church? I feel like Eren might get blamed for that. There's gonna be no winners in this, except for the people who hate the Titans, or hate Eren and his threat. Ooh, and this is kind of on Erwin too, right? Because he set up this whole plan that brought Annie right into the inner ring. Um, is that what control looks like to you? Yeah, he's kind of outmatched. Is Annie trying to reduce casualties? Because she saw the corpses of the, uh, the churchgoers, and then she fled. And she just avoided those people. But not those people. But deep down she really cared. Yeah, I really would like to know that. What makes me so conflicted about this is that I just don't understand what Annie wants, and I just have a feeling that there are good reasons for what she's doing. After watching the last episode, I just felt sad, because whatever her reasons are, I mean, maybe they're evil, I don't know. She just got betrayed by the few people she actually seems to care about. So, my feeling about Annie is just, like, total loneliness. She has this aim, whatever it is. She's been hiding her true personality for a very long time. It seems to me, although I might be reading too much into it, that she doesn't enjoy killing these people. It's just that she's very dedicated to her goal. And now she's an enemy of her friends, especially Armin. Like, she seemed really betrayed by that. And so I think normally in this situation, I'd be like, get her, Aaron, you know, but that's not my feeling. My feeling is that maybe you're making a mistake. He just went right through that house like it was paper. It looks that way. Yeah. I expect nothing less. I wonder if this isn't Erwin internalizing one of the things he said in the forest about how, like, you have to be able to resort to anything. Well, I think in his mind, there really is no other choice because it seems like he expects them to kill Eren. And if Eren is dead and there are other people who can turn into titans that are against them, they don't really stand much of a chance. Even without the other human titans, it seems like Erwin has come to the conclusion, probably correctly, that humanity is doomed without the hope Eren provides. Because the war on the titans has been a war of attrition, but with humanity gradually losing. And there's probably a tipping point where it's just over for humanity, that's closer than most people would believe. Yeah, but his people would destroy you. And you don't want that burden. You can't handle it. He believes that, yeah. And he's willing to die for those beliefs. There you go, at least do something useful. That was the perfect response, and I love what that says about Erwin. Like, he's not hiding it. And I feel like his own life is one of the least of his concerns. But I think it's the honesty about exactly what he's doing, and also the willingness to accept the consequences of his actions, that gives it a purity to me. Like, a purity of action. Like, nothing is out of place. Maybe his decisions are wrong. I can see people taking issues with the choices, but it's really hard to take issue with his character. Because there's sort of no doubt that he's thought everything through. And he's reached a conclusion, and he believes that that's right, and he'll do anything to adhere to that thought. Even if it costs him personally everything. Even if it means his own death. Like, I love how quick he was to respond to that. Like, yeah, go ahead, shoot me. This person does supply, this person does logistics or whatever. Even though there's some weirdness about this whole operation and, you know, what's really right here. I can't not respect that. Because beliefs are really easy. Everybody has beliefs. The question is, do you hold yourself to that standard? And do you continue holding yourself to that standard when everything's on the line? Like, how much are you willing to risk for your beliefs? And all this in a world where we've repeatedly seen that saving your own neck is one of the most important things, and survival is one of the most important things, and the world is naturally cruel. It feels so jarring to have someone like Erwin, who's that dedicated, who's that unflinching. 
Armin's worrying me a little bit. He's getting dark. Damn, he caught the armor leg in his mouth. Yeah, my feelings of any loneliness continue. Yep. She smashed him pretty good. Did he just power up? Oh my. Everyone is as calm as ever. Yeah, she's in bad shape. If she gets out, that's probably it. I don't think she's gonna get out. I don't think she's gonna make it. She's not looking good. Mikasa has no love lost here. She had to taunt her too before she fell. Why does this make me feel bad? I just feel bad for Annie. Oh, he expanded it to the whole world, I see. Yeah. Nah, he's he's too far gone. I am free. Don't do it. I know he's gonna do it, but don't do it! <laughs> Wait. What? This is beyond eating. This is... Like, absorbing. <laughs> Thank you, Levi. Levi has great timing, always. So Annie's still alive? That's a huge relief. I was sure she was gone. Well, Levi made good on his promise to watch out for Aaron. There was something bizarre about that whole thing, or I guess it's something that's been building for Eren. There's a lot of stuff about his titan powers he hasn't unlocked, and I don't mean his abilities, like his fighting abilities. There's something buried in his psyche. Because he just said, I'm free, right? What does that mean? And what the hell was that fusing thing? I got no idea. Are we going to get into the classic anime singularity thing? But logistics and mysteries aside, my gut feeling is that Annie is not evil. And so I'm relieved that she didn't die because I, this whole time, like ever since the female titan appeared, basically, I want to know what her game is, what her goal is. All I know is that she wants to protect the weak from being washed away in the tide. What is this, a book? <laughs> what is going on? That was a lot. So for those who forgot what this says and don't feel like squinting at your screen, it's a story about a miner who tries to dig under Walsina, but although he digs for 20 years, he never gets under it and he eventually hits ground that is similar to the wall. Then he tells a friend about it and the friend says, well, just enjoy your life, whatever. And then the guy disappears and then the friend disappears. And although this will probably be just a short thing in the video, I've been sitting here for 20 minutes <laughs> reading this and it's so confusing. But this combined with the fact that there's all these wallists, right? The walls are not just walls or everything is a wall. The whole world is a wall. I don't know what to make of it. I think the implication is that because he's asking questions about the wall, he's disappeared, which suggests some kind of conspiracy, but it might be something else entirely. It might be that he discovered something that actually was important and that led to him doing something disappearing this adds to the whole surreal nature of this whole setup and human existence in the show this show is going to drive me nuts <laughs> between the deaths and this bizarre world that i can't figure out what happened to the miner where'd he go and where's the hole maybe the walls are god made maybe we should worship them the wallace were right there's a magical thing the wall is an illusion the wall is just in ourselves in our own hearts where everything is a wall the whole world is a wall i don't know what the hell i'm saying <laughs> the wall is a titan i miss the fun facts about horses <laughs> but then again it could just be a story right who knows maybe it's a metaphor i mean probably is a metaphor if it is a metaphor maybe it's a metaphor for like trying to escape the realities of life but you know it's just wall all the way down but even though it's wall all the way down the miner seems to have found purpose through this pursuit he found something meaningful in life through a futile endeavor which is kind of like watching the show <laughs> you watch and you watch and you just get more questions and it's just wall it's just wall all the way down but you just can't stop digging you just can't stop Digging. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> this is the end of me. You, I'm gonna disappear now. This was the last episode of this reaction series. And all of you are gonna vanish too. The whole channel is just gonna be gone one day because I was thinking too hard about the wall. YouTube's gonna come down on me. Mikasa. You almost ate her, but Levi and his timing saved her. But she's in carbonite now and she may be dead anyway. 
Yeah. I mean, she's in Carbonite. Give her a break. What are you expecting? Well, at least you captured her. Yeah, there's going to be major hell to pay. Exactly. How are you holding up, Levi? You alright? No, I don't suppose that you could. I think it all depends on just what people's motivations are and how they spin this, because you're going to have major enemies who are going to use this. I mean, no one really knows, and that's sort of the frustrating thing. And Annie was definitely a threat to the established institutions. There's no doubt about that. At least as far as the side that we're on. I see Jean John is there, looking after him. Yeah, it was a lot for very little. How do you mean? Yeah, it is weird, right? This is Armin's thing now. Yeah, that's sort of my feeling as well. You're gonna go all the way down, you're still gonna hit wall. <laughs> the evil is inside of you the whole time. Why do I feel like Armin's shaping up to be a villain? He's gone all the way into win at any cost. I didn't really understand what he was saying there in that hospital scene. Was he blaming Eren for hesitating? Is Armin the true villain? Is he the true villain of the series? He seems to know everything before it happens. Remember these geese? I remember. Erwin for president. Wow, this ended up being a victory for them somehow. It was the walls. It was the walls the whole time. Is this a new end credit sequence? I think there's something after the credits, right? Oh yeah, Mikasa's always feeding him bread. What does it mean? What does the bread mean? The hell was that? Is that it? Who was that? Oh boy. Oh no, I'm gonna get this one wrong too. Who is it? Is it Armin? <laughs> Pixis? <laughs> Wellman? Wallace number three? Sasha? Krista? Reiner? Levi? Mikasa? Erwin? Mikasa? Aaron's dad? Reinhold? Hanji? Aaron's mom? Armin's mom? Mikasa's mom? Uloa? Mikasa? That's all the names I know. <laughs> I'm tapped out. Well, I'm... Um... Kind of blown away. I don't know what to think. There's just so much happening. It's funny how for so long we've been thinking about the fight outside the walls and now suddenly the fight is entirely within the walls. The threat's coming from within. My hard feeling is that like it's going to be a very human thing, right? It's not just these magical animals that are appearing. The titans were designed to kill humans, but everything is within the walls because the whole world is a wall. You dig and dig and dig, but you just get wall wall all the way down and up. So I just realized that's actually the end of season one. I thought it was 26 episodes because that's sometimes like just the standard number. But yeah, that's the end. So my feelings about season one as a whole, it's really hard for me to have a perspective on this just because like I get the very clear sense that there's a lot here that I'm not seeing. I mean, that's that should be obvious at this point. It's one of those things where I know I'm missing things, but I don't know what I'm missing. So I think that I can't really evaluate it without the perspective of the full series. Just based on what I do know though, I will say that it really, really picked up for me starting with the whole expedition. That was just the most riveting arc. That's basically when I knew I was hooked. I realized this time around in this watch that in my attempted watch years ago, I really didn't get very far at all. And that was a combination of me feeling like it was one of those shows where there are gonna be a lot of questions, which, to my credit, I was right about. And also just the bleakness of it, it wasn't very satisfying. On this watch, while I don't have any answers yet still, I'm a little bit more intrigued by the dark nature of the show. And part of the curiosity for me is I want to see where that goes, you know? The assessment from a lot of the characters, especially Armin recently, has been that life is cruel and that survival is sort of paramount to everything. Or when you're facing danger, there's no room for values or virtues or anything like that. And so I wonder what the final assessment is gonna be for the show. Is that gonna be the whole picture or are they actually gonna substitute that with something more more important, more meaningful? And I think both would be exciting. I mean, I think a certain way and I like to think optimistically, but I think it would be interesting if they actually could present a case for, for that, you know, a case for that, no, actually there is no inherent meaning to life. I think it would be fun to explore that. 
But I do suspect it's the other one. I suspect that we're gonna find other things that are valuable. And this whole assessment, like the road Armin's on right now, is not the complete picture. But I really have no idea. I mean, obviously I'm speaking from a place of very limited understanding. I mean, I think I'm a quarter of the way through the show now and I have no idea who the enemies are. I don't know who the villains are. I don't know who the heroes are. I'm not sure that Eren and crew are supposed to be heroes or maybe their heroism is a misguided heroism where they might change their minds. I really don't know. One thing I've noticed this time around though that I'm really grateful for is I'm really enjoying certain characters. There are some characters I feel like have not been explored that well, but I kind of have faith that they will be, that they'll be given their time to shine. Like Mikasa is an example of that. But there are characters already that I'm, I feel a gravitational pull towards, such as Erwin, Levi, and their dynamic. I'm looking forward to the OVA, which I'll watch very soon. Armin, although I'm a little bit worried for him right now, I feel like his character took a turn for, for the dark. Jean John is very interesting to me. Um, what was his name? Melville? Herman? I don't know, the military police guy. Interested to see his role. Sasha, of course. Although Sasha, you know, she hasn't really had her time in the sun recently, but I'm sure that will come. I think if this season's goal was to shake you up, right, and to make you take a dark view of this world, and to make you feel very suspicious of everyone, question your own beliefs and question what you know, then it was a resounding success. It paints the picture really clearly. I mean, there's a very clear tone. And so I feel like there's a lot to work with now. I feel like this establishes the world and the feeling of the world very deliberately. And so now with that, I'm interested to see where we go from here. I want to see the questions answered. I want to see the characters continue to grapple with these existential issues. And I'm so curious about thematically where the show is going to go. But that's really all I can say for now with the information that I have. So yeah, that's the end of season one. I want to give a huge thank you to all my patrons for all the support during Attack on Titan and also Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I've been having so much fun with these two shows and the fact that I'm able to do this is all thanks to you guys. A very special shout out this week to Camden Bales for joining the top tier. Thank you for making season one so much fun. Thanks to everybody watching. Love you guys as always and can't wait to see you very soon for the start of season two.